Hi, my name is Andrew Nagal, and I'm a junior at WPI studying robotics engineering, and I'm the team lead for this year. And I'm Jess, I'm a sophomore robotics engineering major here at WPI, and I've been doing strategy for the day. This is Team WPI's day one update video. So, Team WPI is a group of WPI students and FRC alumni here at the Washburn shops at WPI taking on robotic three days for the very first year. This year, we actually had the opportunity to go to first official kickoff at Southern New Hampshire University and <clears throat> to take our own videos of how the field works. You can check those videos out at the WPI Robotics Club YouTube page or in the link below. So with this year's new game, there's a lot of really cool updates that we wanted to make sure you were aware of. The first one of those is the addition of the technician to the team. This person will get a drive team button, but they won't be an active member of the gameplay. Instead, they'll be helping with robot connectivity, helping troubleshoot before a match, or helping carry the robot on and off the field. And so, first sees this person as someone who is either the technical lead for your team, or someone that knows a lot about the technical aspects of your robot. Another thing we wanted teams to keep note of was that although this year there is a starting configuration and a restriction on how much robots may extend outside of their frame perimeter, there is actually no height restriction during match play. In fact, the manual even states that teams should um, the only real consideration teams should have is the height venue or other cameras or equipment being used above the field. The last takeaway we wanted teams to have was the lift bar. This year, in order to get the ranking point, all three robots um, will need to share the mere 13 inch long bar if the levitate power up is not used, which could make it difficult um, for typical match play. In terms of match strategy, we wanted to make sure that teams understood the difference between the different scoring areas. Although there are three scoring areas, teams may only score um, points from two of them. The scale at the center of the field and their own alliance switch. When you own your own switch, you all can accumulate normal point values, but when you own your alliance's switch, you actually only prevent them from accumulating their own points. The uh, difference with this uh, scale at the center of the field is the scale, this scale gives both teams the opportunity to accumulate points, depend, depending on who owns it at the time. Moving on to the autonomous period, when we looked at the game, we thought, thought that there would need to be a minimum plan in place to make sure that a team could be successful. What we saw that as was a team that would be able to cross over the auto line and then be able to score one cube in the switch. We thought that scoring in the switch would be a better idea overall since if you score in the switch, it guarantees that you'll have it in your possession, possession for some time since it will take a lot of time for the autonomous period to end and the other team to come over and regain possession of that switch. But if you're looking for a more advanced option for that, what we're going to try to do is have a two cube auto. Keep in mind that you can only have one cube in your robot at a time, but what we're thinking you could do is either score one in the switch and then score one in the scale, or score two of them in the scale. By putting two of them in the scale, you're more likely to have ownership of that scale by the end of Autonomous, instead of just putting one in there. But by putting one on the switch, again, you will have ownership of it for at least some time. As the competition season goes on, it's really going to improve the strategies that people will be able to have since all of the teams will get better and their strategies will improve. When looking at this game, there are a couple big concerns that we wanted to make sure you were clear on. One of the big ones we saw was that teams cannot cross through the null zone, which is the area in between the ends of the scale and the alliance walls. And we wanted to make sure that you were clear that you could not cross into that without getting a penalty if you were trying to score into the scale. The other point was that human players are not allowed to interact with any of the power cubes during Autonomous, which means they cannot score cubes into the vault, they cannot touch any cubes that come in, and they cannot deliver cubes to robots. So if robots are trying to score on the field, they need to be using the 16 provided cubes on the field. In terms of the teleoperated period, we actually thought that this portion would be a lot interesting compared to the past couple of uh, years' games because of the high potential for variability in gameplay. So it is important for teams to hold strategy in a very high regard this year. We also wanted teams to know that um, the difference between power-ups and to figure out how it can benefit their team based off of what their robot is capable of. For more details on our thoughts on power-ups and potential strategies, please check out the descriptions on this YouTube video and check out our WPI Robotics Club YouTube channel. We also thought it was be better uh, to do a few things really well this year compared to spreading yourself really thin as there are so many different things to do in this game. 
for rookie teams, our advice would, uh, again, don't try to do everything. It's better to understand what you're capable of and what you want to do and do those few things really well. In terms of our end game, one of the things we really wanted to make sure you knew was that the ramp leading up to the area below the climbing bar is three and a half inches tall. So make sure your robot can climb that area. The other thing in that area at the end game is the climbing bar itself. One of the things we've been debating a lot is how to fit three robots onto a climbing bar that's only 13 inches. And so it presents a really unique challenge this year to fit the robots onto that, especially if you're not using the levitate power up. If you want to use that, it's a really good idea and it makes it a lot easier to scale, but that's a definitely a decision for you and your alliance. In terms of our team's current progress, we've been building a lot of different field elements, such as the um, hang bar itself, in order to test different methods of how teams can hang on that bar and fit other robots, or leave room for other robots. We've also been prototyping different intakes, and we've been working on a design for timing mechanism, and finally, we've been working on our drive stream, which we will go over in more detail in other videos you will see. Be sure to check out the WPI Robotics Club YouTube page and Facebook page for more updates. See you all tomorrow! Hey guys, so for this lifting mechanism, we used pieces from the Rev Robotics lifting kit and we designed a two-stage fireman's ladder uh, where if you pull on the string, it'll essentially uh, elevate. And we decided to use uh, a two-stage ladder because these are four feet tall and a uh, two-stage uh, two would put you at about uh, seven and a half feet and that would be perfect uh, to put up game pieces or to climb. Uh, on top of that, we added another piece of uh, one by one extrusion so that we can uh, add our second stage, attach it to the intake, and have that uh, lift as well. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? This is, this is going to go. Thanks, Rev. We chose a West Coast drivetrain because of its simplicity and its versatility. Here you can see us machining out one of the sides for our West Coast drivetrain. You can learn more on the WPI Robotics Club YouTube channel. So here's the current version of our prototype for um, our intake. So for our intake, we ended up deciding to do more of a claw design um, with side rollers, as you can see. Um, we wanted to do, we wanted to create this so the side rollers were able to move in and out to account for the different angles and orientations that the power cube may be in. We also found over the course of our iterations that two wheels on each side was more beneficial as it allow, um, allows for better control of the cube when actually um, holding it inside the claw. In terms of different intake wheels, we tried a lot of different combinations based off of the different wheels we had. We had some UDP wheels, some um, Endymark wheels lying around, and some Colson Performas. The current configuration on this intake um, isn't uh, what we ended up liking the most, which were actually the Colson Performas. We thought that they had a surprising amount of grip. Um, Make as sure to follow our social media and our build blog to stay tuned to any updates.